<laughs> Welcome. <laughs> good, good, good intro, David. Crushing. Welcome, everyone. I like. I tried to compose myself, and uh, it wasn't happening. Welcome, everybody, to the Week 7 Swellcast here on rotogrinders.com. I uh, would like to thank everyone for tuning in. We have just been having a professional pre-show meeting. Um and that's all we'll say about that. Total Let's agreed to finally have a terrible take, I think. Yeah. Oh, I gotta yeah. look for I gotta start looking right now. But, by the way, yeah. John Johnu Smith, after uh after Tuttle <laughs> gave that terrible take, he oh, was target he was targeted, I think, for the first time this year. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Boom. Got a got a reception. Thank you. The very terrible much. takes usually um result in the guy being released a few weeks later. <laughs> Bobo Bobo is no longer with a team. I don't believe. I mean, Scotty Scotty Miller is just taking over. Who who would have known? Yeah, actually, and, I, and Vance McDonald got hurt after the Tuttle's terrible take yeah, week. Maybe uh, uh, it's the Tuttle curse. Let's let's not go there. Let's come it, on. It it might be. I don't think Tuttle has had one terrible take that has done well this year. It might be cursed. Did you? Did we not just say Vance McDonald is is two touchdowns not good enough for you, Soccer Dave? No, that that was actually a that was a truly bliss show. <laughs> that that was like a different show. So, all right, let's um, welcome everybody. We got Pete Overzet, Davis Maddock, Dan Gasper. Week seven here. Let's just go right into it. Overview, Overzet's overview. Peter, what do you got for us? Who's in? Who's out? It's the Overzet's overview of the week here, sponsored by RotoGrinders.com. High level, really interesting week. Lots of ways you could go at quarterback <laughs> and tight end. Going to be really interested to see how these ownership projections shake out. <laughs> Lots of injury this stuff is to monitor. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a mix of, he's like, should I keep the voice going? Should I not? <laughs> Don't ask me to double down, Gaspar, because I will. <laughs> Why don't why don't you toss it over for Davis? All right, Davis. <laughs> <laughs> we got eleven games in the main slate. What do you got for us? Eleven games on the main slate and like two and a half playable running backs. It's uh, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's it's a really good it's a really good situation as far as running back goes. Uh, your quarterback player pool very similar to what it was last week, just minus Patrick Mahomes because he's playing on Thursday. Tight end, again, There uh, you're looking at George Kittle, Evan Ingram, Mark Andrews, and Hunter Henry. Darren Waller, 4,700, pretty playable as well. And then wide receiver, uh, T.Y. Hilton may challenge for the highest-owned wide receiver in a main slate this season. I, I would I would think he pretty comfortably is going to get over 30% in some large field contest and probably over 60% in cash. But uh, outside of outside of that, we are really waiting on these Green Bay wide receiver injuries because that is going to really determine ownership percentage for the expensive running backs and uh, kind of how you can go with your third wide receiver spot in cash. So maybe our maybe our Wisconsin native, Mr. Tuttle 05, can give us a Green Bay Packers wide receiver update. I mean... I played Darius Shepard, and he was in my <laughs> and, and, and he was in my best showdown lineup. So, well, the, the because show. of him, we have Lazard, the Lazard King. He was he was he was fun in college football DFS. He, I mean, he's really good, and he's he is six five, runs uh, I believe a four four flat. Like uh, he he had the second highest freak score of his class and he was a guy who if he would have been drafted would have been i mean he would have been an elite uh, like dynasty guy to own so i i am kind of in to lazard this week if adams and uh geronimo both sit we all know it takes a lot for you to fall in love with an unheralded <laughs> green bay packers <laughs> wide receiver <laughs> jake kumaro's <laughs> jake kumaro's very existence is an affront to my life yeah, like he's... the fact that the fact that that slow UW Whitewater punt returner is on the hey, Green Bay it. Packers <laughs> roster and watch not it. Jeff Janis is uh, it's honestly a crime against humanity, and I stand you're, by that. You're gonna offend my parents with that talk. <laughs> <laughs> he's 28 years old. He's he's older than me. Drip 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 <laughs> drip drip drip. All right. <laughs> you're you're making Dave and Laurie very upset. Oh. Tuttle, any uh, interesting tidbits before we start the show? Um, not really. I mean, it's it's kind of also the week of potentially returning people from injury. Well, not really potential anymore, but 
Uh, Barkley's back. Ingram sounds like he's going to be back. So uh, when, when Davis says we only have like one and a half, two running backs, he's probably just not including the, the best running back on the slate. And Saquon. Well, I just don't, I don't, I don't see how he's playable without some of these three K guys coming in because there is not any yeah, good you, you salary can't, you can't relief get to him on DraftKings for sure. You've got uh, Leonard Fournette. Probably Davis. the well, are the Davis beat... bad against the run. I, I don't know. Are, are Davis, they? are are you are you ready to fade Fournette this week? No. Why would I've, no. I've played him the last two weeks? I don't know why I'd fade him now. By by no. Fournette, do you mean bad Malcolm Brown? <laughs> no his his official his official nickname is Fat CMC. Okay, my bad. I was getting those mixed up. Uh, Davis, <laughs> you wanted to play Malcolm Brown so bad. He got I his opportunity really good for the first drive. I felt so 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 good for that first drive. Guy the just looked dude. like guy the looked brand. like Gale Sayers just smashing the 49ers defense and all oh, things went south so fast. It was such and I thought when Henderson fumbled I was like okay Boom! We're we got we got life. We're ready to go. But I mean, honestly, if he if he punches in that touchdown, I probably win on the day. And uh, you know, I'm just like a less bitter person about the life that I'm currently living. Yeah, and also, in case you did not see the uh, the tweet that I had, Davis was contemplating playing Preston Williams in cash on Sunday morning around uh, 30 minutes before lock. Sounds it like was he was amazing. digging into those uh, cornerback matchups and really came around. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Kitchen will be all in this week against Buffalo. Oh, uh, no. Uh, I, I will, have a I will good, not. Does he have a good cornerback matchup this week? Because I believe that defense is uh, – you You do not want to play people against uh, really, really good defenses. Uh, I'm just one of the things that I won't do. Playing is that, against is Buffalo, that one of the, Is that one of your personal tenets? Is that one yeah, of your, your, your core it's principles It's one of the of uh, soccer, soccer dad <laughs> commandments. <laughs> don't so, – don't play don't play like mediocre receivers against really good defenses. Dave, we'll, won't be targeting Buffalo, won't be targeting San Francisco. Dave is our boots on the ground in Tennessee. Uh, what's the word <laughs> on this Tannehill situation? What's the whispers, the rumblings? How are the, the folks feeling? That that's uh that's Tanatril to you, Peter. Oh man. This uh yeah. <clears throat> I don't know what people are going to expect out of him. If the offensive line is going to continue to be as bad as what it has been, it's just, it's not going to matter. Like it's, it, it's not going to matter. Like how, how good Tannehill is if he doesn't get time to throw, which we saw like in that game last week. If you, if you're Googling Ryan Tannehill and the, the second thing that autofills is Ryan yeah. Tannehill wife wife. Yeah. Yeah. You're probably not a very good player. Or your wife's just extremely, extremely hot. I, I yeah. love this. New Thank you, Clay of- Travis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's not that. I mean, she's. Yeah. This is the new, the new segment of the show is it's uh, where Tuttle gets extremely thirsty <clears throat> online. Uh, this <laughs> featuring <laughs> Lauren Tannehill. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's talk about quarterbacks. Is it uh, the Lamar Jackson show, Davis? I think it I think it has to be, especially because Marquise Brown is probably going to be back this week. I, I actually think Russell Wilson will be more popular, but I like the I like the stacks with Lamar a little bit better. And also we we've just kind of seen in competitive games, like Lamar's rushing just goes nuts. Like when they are when they are, you know, kind of having to try and grind one out, they they're just like way more willing to run him. So I think like he could definitely top. He could definitely get the hundred yard bonus again in this game, which would be, you know, that's just the nuts when you get that from your quarterback. He had what thirty four DK points with one touchdown last week, just like wild stuff. Tuttle, yeah, Lamar's good. Josh Allen's good. Um, going up against Miami. Um, who, who, do you think I don't Josh know. Allen's going to be like egregious chalk? Like, do you think he's going to be like? I, nah. I, I think he might be like wild owned, but also people nah. will play Josh Allen naked. Like they won't be stacking him with any of these dudes. Eh, quarterback. He's not going to be chalky. He's a quarterback. He'll be, he'll be 10 to 15%. And that's about it. Same, same with Lamar. Um, the thing with, with the stack too, with, with Allen is uh, <laughs> uh, John Brown. It's groin. Yeah. Uh, has limited, limited, limited him the past couple days. So what we're looking at a Cole Beasley stack. 
we're looking at Robert Foster season, <laughs> my my guy. We have so I just pulled it up. Josh Allen. We have Josh Allen at nine percent owned currently for DraftKings. I would I would probably take the over on that. I think in cash games, I think he'll be over. Um, it'll be interesting to see who has the stones to go back to uh, good old Jared Goff. You can't, I don't think you can do it in cash just because we, we've we now seen just how egregiously off schedule the Rams offense can get. But uh, he's probably like the like him and his wide receivers are probably the uh, the most GTO stack in tournaments, I, I think. People yeah. are going to go back to him this week. I can't help yeah. but notice that uh, I'm sitting here over on a Kyler Murray bandwagon. My legs are dangling off the edge. I've been here all season, never left, never wavered. Nah. <laughs> I mean, who wants to join me? I can't give it to me? you, buddy. I can't Let's... give it to you. The <clears throat> only the only non-wavering Kyler Truther is on this show, and his name is not Peter Overzet. No, no. We got off when there was um, morale. Was I low. never got off, dude. I've played him oh. every week. No, they were fording the river. I had to get off then. I'm back on. We're ready to go, dude. Morale is high. We're headed to Oregon. <laughs> morale morale is morale is extremely high i i think this is like these are two of the all-time worst defenses and uh i i think both of these quarterbacks could have uh like like these two quarterbacks should really smash i i don't ever like i normally don't try and like get too many quarterbacks in my pool but there are probably like eight or nine guys i i'm interested in like stacking this week I think in the past five weeks, the only quarterback that has scored less than 24 fantasy points against the Giants was Dwayne Haskins, the illustrious Dwayne Haskins. So I think it's a pretty <laughs> good spot. Illustrious? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's open up DraftKings. We'll uh, create a lineup, and uh, Davis, you'll get to go first. Oh, my gosh. I feel so blessed. Well, let's just go. Let's just start with our boy, Kyler Murray. Let's fly the flag. Welcome aboard, Davis. Great to have you, buddy. Air we've been, wait, season we've back. been waiting for you. I would also like to so let everyone know that I've also been on the Kyler Murray oh, train. Oh, yeah. Every yeah, week. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Every are we going to stack Kyler with uh, his Christian wide Kirk? receiver one, Max Williams? <laughs> <laughs> we're go- <laughs> we're, I think we got to go. We got to go old man Fitz, right? No. We don't even know if Kirk's going to actually play this week. Yeah, yeah I, think, it, I think old injury man Injury designations don't matter, Tuttle. You hush. He's playing. Did he practice today? Actually, I don't. I didn't see. I will look for that right now. But let's just go, old man Fitz. Right? You guys now. want me to call Chow? Yeah. <laughs> Fitz hey, Chow. is 61, 61 hundred. <laughs> Chow, let me know, man. Oh, oh wow, he's a he's a little concerned about. Wait, hey, wait, wait, wait. We need Chow. We need Chow for the Packers wide receivers, dude. I need oh, him. No, I need he him just to... hung up. Sorry. <laughs> I need I need the frame I need the frame by frame on Geronimo Allison's concussion before before I would know what happened to him. Oh. All right, whose um, turn is it? I'm just sad. I'm just sad. Ryan Grant's not in the player pool. Tough scene. Yeah. Tuttle. Um, I'm gonna make you. I'm gonna jam it and make you guys do this and, and just make you go cheap. I'm going. I'm gonna jam Saquon. All right. Bring it right back. Ooh. So are we are we getting forced into a flow chart, guys? Uh, <laughs> that's why that's why I went went Barkley, so we didn't have to jam. We could, it. Okay. Jam right. I mean, we we can we can still do that if we want to go, you know, all out game stack. But is all it right. me or you, Dave? It uh, you can go for it. All right, I'm gonna play my favorite running back play of the week, Tevin Coleman. This is actually right. this is actually a very good play. Coleman Coleman is going to be, and he's not going to be super owned because it's all going to gravitate to carry on. <clears throat> I'm going to go with the uh, the payday narrative, and also the uh, the funnel defense narrative, um, and Dude, whatever. My God, it's literally 2019. No one say funnel defense on this show Tuttle, ever again. <laughs> Tuttle believes in the funnel defense. No, he um, doesn't. Tuttle is good at DFS. No, he does not believe that. Matchups matter. <laughs> so uh Darren Waller though at tight end at forty seven hundred. So isn't this see I, I've seen people try to use payday narratives before. Isn't that the reverse though? Like, yeah, he he's paid, paid, he doesn't care now. Yeah. He can go back to he can go back to popping Xanax no. and drinking after practice now. No, exactly. that's like the second or third game after. He wants to show his appreciation immediately after. It also I heard, means, no. I heard that uh, no, I heard he makes 
I heard he makes music and they were playing it at the Raiders practice today. Yes, that's the better that's narrative. The be- yeah, that's a good one. That's yeah. a good narrative. Do you guys know the name of his album? Wall Street. How baller oh, is that? Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I wanted it to just be Waller season. So like, <laughs> he, like he proves that he's just one of us, like a nerd <clears throat> like us. No joke. I listened oh, to the full album today at my desk on Spotify. <laughs> Shit slaps, man. What can I say? <laughs> We should we should contact Darren to see if we can you know throw some music right here now for him. <laughs> Please, plug. All right, so we got um, game stack plus Tevin Coleman plus Darren Waller. Davis, you're up. I mean, did we did we take fits or did we not? Yeah, we did because you oh, wanted to. Okay. Not because yeah. any of us wanted to. He's such an unsexy play. He's never going to win you a tournament. Hey, watch your mouth. You know what I? You know what I could do if I wanted if I wanted to uh, to just destroy destroy some preconceived notions is we could take Dante Pettis finally playing snaps against uh, against Washington. Mister well, uh, Mister Brand over everything wants yeah. to play Dante. We're, we're Pettis. not going to do that though. We're going to play. <laughs> we're going to play. He was maybe going to be my terrible take, and you kind of just ruined that. I almost I mentioned him there. as well. I was going to wait to wide receivers, but he's that's been playing a lot of slots. That's not who we're taking, though. We're taking, we're taking DK Metcalf leading the NFL in targets while standing in the red zone. Will not Gronk Disley is out. And this. Uh, I think this game has some sick shootout potential. I could definitely see this being just one of those awesome, uh, like 35 to 28 games, and uh, Metcalf – being the beneficiary of Will Disley ascending to heaven and leaving us mere mortals. All right. Tuttle, you're up. I'm trying to make an egregious um, bring back the Metcalf stack here with somebody other than Mark Andrews. <laughs> if you play out, a uh, do defense. Do we want Snead? Do we want Miles Boykin? Do we want Chris Moore? Dude, we definitely want Seth Roberts, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when he scored a touchdown on like every route he ran last year? Um, I think it was against the Chiefs. Let's see. I will go with. Let's do someone in the flex. Let's put it in the flex. How does that sound? I don't know if I want to go extremely chalky or not. Oh, I, I'm going to pick somebody just to piss the hell out of Davis. Oh, dude, come on. Any, any guesses? Um, I don't even know. If you if you play him in your lineup, make sure you play me for a bunch of money. Cole Beasley, Melvin Gordon. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, that's gross. Yep. You know what? I will say, if you Take play Melvin in. Gordon this week, you you can send me an invite on DraftKings. <laughs> 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 this is the everybody hates Melvin Gordon. It's it's popular to hate. Oh, Melvin he's gonna Gordon. get twenty carries this week. Yeah. Zero yeah. doubt in my mind. He's going. Yep. He's gonna get like big time fed. I just I don't yep. know if he's got the juice to do it anymore. And everybody hates it. A DFS Twitter hates him, so it's uncool to play him. But he's gonna yeah. get twenty carries. It's a decent matchup. He's, he's, oh, is this uh, is this the guaranteed thirty touch spot from Tuttle? <laughs> I'm not going to go that far. I'm not going to go that far. But people are like, well, you know, Anthony Lynn's going to be logical. No, coaches aren't logical. We we know Anthony Lynn's not logical. He's not going to give Eckler more carries. Gordon's going to see twenty touches. He's going to hit, going to get a touchdown or two, and he's going to be nobody's going to own him because people hate him. All right. So then, if you take a defense that rhymes with the. Um... The Miami Schlafflins, then that would give you like a really good uh, 5,800, which is like there's a lot of good wide receivers in that spot. Yeah. Um, I like Galladay and Boyd there. Uh, let's go with Galladay. Yeah. On Galladay. I think I heard on uh, JJ's pod, <laughs> his uh, trends pod, that Detroit is like second and throws downfield. Second to yeah. the they to they the are they are crushing. They for a while Matt Stafford had the most deep passes in the NFL. I I hated the Daryl Bevel signing. He's been great. He is he has got Stafford doing what Stafford is good at. I, I think that was one of the most undercover good coaching signings of the offseason. The, uh, he's been the, the opposite of Kellen Moore. The the best part is that he's made JD McKissick relevant again. <laughs> relevant relevant is a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> well, getting the same amount of targets as carry on in the passing game, which is uh, a big bummer for those of us who like playing carry on, especially yeah. for those of us who have to play carry on in cash this week. It's going to be a really tough scene when JD McKissick gets like six targets. All right. 
<laughs> so someone alerted me uh, in the YouTube comment section a few weeks ago, and then uh, another person at the office told me, Davis, you have this like where your voice trails off. And never, I don't know. You've never you, noticed that before. You've never noticed it. I do it every sentence. <laughs> yes. Has it only been this year, or have I just no. like you taken just a, never noticed? I've just never noticed it until it's pointed out to me, and now I can't get over it. It's, well, and it's I, because I'm I've noticed well, for the last five years, but I'm professional enough to not comment on it. Yeah, dude. This is this is really uh, this is outrageous. If you this know, there's a live show. This, if this yes. is not a live show, I'd storm off right now. You know that there's a scientific reason for this, right? Because the takes start so hot, but by the time he gets to the end of it, he's lost confidence and it just cools off. <laughs> that that's it for sure. <laughs> All you right. can't play Dante Pettis, but his snaps are increasing. So maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's move on to running back. You mentioned carry on Johnson. <laughs> uh, so uh, you know. you've got uh, Fournette, Dalvin Cook, Chris Carson, carry on Saquon. Are those like the core running backs? Yeah, just like I, a ball load of these fat guys who are not going to get any <laughs> targets and everyone's going to jam them in. It's so do. tough, dude. Like Fournette, and, Cook, and Carson all kind of like share those similar oh, traits. And Ingram will still somehow be 30% owned. And, and he will still get 20. And he'll get... Dude, people love he'll, he'll, Mark Ingram. Dude, he was 30% owned in the Millionaire Maker last week and was second on his team in the backfield in snaps. Like it, it, this marking room stuff is crazy to me. We got we got yelled at for not mentioning him two weeks ago either. People, love well, no, you got yelled at and you got offended and you um you pulled the Smiths and you quote tweeted them on Twitter yeah, to embarrass them. That's that's usually not my not my job. Oh, dude, if you don't ever want to do that, let me do it. I love it. <laughs> the, the, th- the thing is, I don't jump. I don't check my DMs frequently, but he actually jumped in my DMs too. Oh, that, that, that was crossing the line. Do not get I to done. Do. Dude, I, I wish like I wish DMs. you I, I wish you could wade. I wish you could wade into my DMs. It's just a hundred season long start sit questions. Yeah, that's why I don't even bother looking, but sometimes you have to click just so the notification goes away. I got <laughs> and I then got I, an I like 18. saw him in there with the Ingram stuff and I'm like, oh come on, man. I got an eight team PPR trade question in my DMs today. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did see that tweet from you. That's how I, I, do. I, t- I sent it to mom and I said I made it. I got, I got there. So like, there's a, there's a dude in our Slack channel who plays in an eight team league. And it's like a joke now. He'll be like, should I drop Josh Gordon for Allen Robinson? And it's just, it's just become like a running meme. And it just yeah. it, it triggers me so hard. That is hilarious. That's a good um, so anyways, uh, we've got four nets. Yeah, not, you- not a chance. He disappoints as the highest on running. Okay. Back, I think. So Davis in your, in your GPP builds, are you setting a maximum of 30 with a, uh, a no, man? You, t- you got it. It doesn't work. You got to do it with wide receivers. <laughs> Can we, uh, I don't think we've ever talked about his brother being named Leonard. Leonard. Yeah. Leonard for Brother is so no longer with the LSU Tigers. Very creative parents with their naming there. <laughs> So here's the thing with Fournette. I just, I, it's like you can't, he is the best running back play. I'm not going to make any effort to limit him. I'm not going to, like, I'm just going to let it ride. If, if I end up with 70% Leonard Fournette, I'm fine with that. The guy, the guy who I am afraid to be like having a ton of is Chris Carson because, like, the dude, I mean, if he fumbles or if he messes up on a pass block early, like, it's just, you know, it's CJ Pro Size season or it's Rashad Penny season. It just like, I, I just there's a level of trust I just cannot get to with Chris Carson. You can look at Chris Carson's game logs and tell which weeks he was chalk. Yep. Just, just by looking <laughs> six, at his six game points. Logs. <laughs> 25, 25, 25, 5. <laughs> Except people played him last week. It's just oh dude, last last week was so <clears> brutal. But he just he was people just jammed him in last week. Just no fear. No fear. On the road, just getting him in there. Do what you gotta do. Down a couple O line. Uh, Tuttle, what's your take on, on Dalvin Cook this week? He's a good play. He's going to get targets, too. It's a fine matchup. Um, I don't think he fits ideal construction on DraftKings, but I could see him making uh, cash game builds on, on FanDuel. 
Will you like? Well, let's say that all three major wide receivers are out for Green Bay. Would that make it more playable for him? I think. I think you just play Saquon, right? If 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 well, you that's play the Lazard, question for yeah for nine hundred more. Yeah, um, I, I'm. I, I would be Team Saquon over over that one. And I don't even. I mean, everyone knows I hate Saquon, but I, even I even I still think he'd probably be the better play. You don't hate him. You hate what he represents. No, I. I mean. At this point, I hate Giants fans so much that like it's starting to it's starting to transition onto the players. It's a dark. I'm in a dark place. You need to you and Kelly. I, need I, to get dude, right. I need to I need to book a freaking win. <laughs> Speaking of, listen to the uh, the Gill cast on Monday. Morning. No, just don't listen to it. It's like if, if okay. Here's the thing: if me, Sammy, and Nate all lose this week. I, I don't know if we can do another show. It's just, it's gone dark. Yeah, dude. but the ratings have gone through the roofs. Like, yeah, it's they, better for ratings if you lose. The list, yeah. like, oh, it's way late. better for ratings. But guess, guess that money does like none of. We're not seeing any of that. Huh? It's just like we're we're out, we're out here asking where the blood donation center is. Like, it's not, the need arrow pull, is not up. Need you to see pull these Melvin. Are, Tell these corporate. are for plasma injections. <laughs> tell, tell corporate that you're not going. You're not. Uh, you're not doing any more Gilcast until they they give you a percentage of all the listens. So. The, the first podcast hold out in DFS history <laughs> <laughs> would be also the shortest. <laughs> do, do podcasters matter? Is the question. I, Davis, do you think your problem is your main slate cash game or firing three hundred lineups at every showdown slate? <laughs> um, it's definitely like if like I could probably sustain I could probably sustain some of these cash game losses if I didn't play 700 lineups a slate, but I'm I'm unwilling I'm unwilling to either get better at cash games or stop firing. So we're just right. Which just variance, dude. It's just I'm just on the bad side of variance, dude. It'll regress to the to dude. The it's just sure. it's just it's just it's just two v twos. It's just I'm just losing some two v twos. Negative GPP <laughs> regression. You're due. You're due for a win. I'm due. I'm due. Win. Dave, yeah, this is due for some life regression. <laughs> True. <laughs> uh, Tuttle on Vandal, since you're our, our Vandal guy, uh, Devonta Freeman, 6.4 against the Rams. Derrick Henry, 6.5. Or you've got Tevin Coleman at 6.2. Of those three guys, who would you choose for, like, your running back three or flex guy? Man, I'll take Tevin. I'll, 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 I'll ride the Tevin take on that one. Pounded, How dude. bad would you have to be a DFS to play Derrick Henry this week? He's cheap on DK. Yeah, he's like fifty six hundred, I think. I don't worry, I didn't tout Derrick Henry last week. Mm, yeah, the yeah. reverse reverse it, mush. It's not good. All right. Um, any other running backs? Cheap running backs? Um, so I think there's go ahead. one. Go ahead, Peter. Yeah, go ahead, no, Peter. Peter. Over I was that. gonna say uh, no one's mentioned Devin Singletary yet. Uh, I think he's going to be back, and I f- it's weird. People keep mentioning Frank Gore, even knowing that Singletary is going to be back. I don't. I think Singletary steps right in and has a huge role. Uh, so yeah, against Miami, who's just uh, all time historically bad uh, defense, I think Singletary is a great play. What about David Johnson? If he's healthy, feels like he's going to be like single digits, right? Yeah. Like, and just like no one's mentioned him, no one's going to put him. He's like the dude you stack with Kyler. And we already got the preview last week, right? Because we were all just afraid because we thought he was going to be limited. Then he came in and smashed. So if he's limited again this week, although it is a different injury, right? It's that ankle instead of the back. I don't know if that changes things. I got to call Chow. My ankle, my back. You kind of look like, uh, what's her face? That sings that song? What's her name? I'm now fascinated who Soccer Dave looks like. Which pop star? Oh, I... If I Google my ankle, my back, will I get the no? It, no, because it's uh, it's actually P U S S Y. Oh my god! And crack, are there children what, in the room? And crack. What's the what's the big white lady's name? She's large and she's white. And oh my gosh, why can't I think of this now? I don't. I do not know. All right. Okay, don't don't Google P and crack. I just did that. So. Yeah. Just say. <laughs> I think I think the song is "Lick My Neck, My Back." I think that's the song. Oh, it's yeah, it's "My Neck, My Back." Peter, have you never heard that song? I probably have, but first you got to put your back into it. I'm gonna hear it's it through a new lens lady. going forward. That's for sure. <laughs> I, I think it, it's Sierra, isn't it? 
No. No. It's not and that no, Ki, some lady named Kaya is the one that's coming up. Apparently, she's but she's Kia not. Kaya. Honestly, sounds like yeah. Tuttle's next kid's name. <laughs> I have a kid named Kaya. Thank you very much. All right. Um. Let's move on. Then Ellie L King L King. I missed that. Missed it. L King L King. Google it. E L L E King. And tell me if she does not look like so. Holy shit, she looks like soccer name so much. <laughs> yes, Peter sees it. I mean, <laughs> I can't tell if this is flattering to Dave or flattering to her. <laughs> oh man, she does. <laughs> <laughs> she really does. Can we move on to wide receivers? Tough scenes here on the Gilcast. (laughs) Did you say the Gilcast? Yeah. He did say the Gilcast, which is this is what this show has turned into. Our host, L King, will now get us back on track. That was like the worst five minutes in Swolecast history. I'm sure we've had spelling things. (laughs) (laughs) The Tuttle spelling B. Not safe for work. P U S S Y E L L E. <laughs> All right, let's please move to wide receiver. Um, Davis, you mentioned T.Y. Hilton. Yeah, he's got a good, he's got a really good historical record against the Houston Texans. <laughs> just, just smashes the Houston Texans every game. Just, you know, it's all, I think he averages about 16 DraftKings points a game against the Houston Texans. It's a really good PVT matchup. So, just really smashing in that PVT this week. Except for the one time he caught three balls for like 14 yards. Other than that, it was he was probably the, hurt. The the PVT, <clears throat> the PVT title. He's had two yeah, weeks. That was that was great. Those back in the day, we had uh, we had touts touting Park versus t- the team, right? That was what it was. And in, in just baseball. say just say Tommy G. No, it, was, it wasn't Tommy. Just say Tommy. It, was, it wasn't Tommy. I don't even know if I don't even know if Tommy would have dug that deep to be no. quite frank. <laughs> no, no, no. Tommy would have done a quick line and been like, "All right, play this guy," <laughs> and probably won with it too. All right. Um, so, in, so after T. Y. Hilton, wide receiver two, if Christian Kirk is healthy. I I mean I do I do really like Christian Kirk. I am I am trying to play. I really am trying to play Larry Fitzgerald in, in DraftKings Cash. I think he's, I think he's a really good play. I, he just has he just has really stable target volume and is in one of the better total games of the week. I mean, I, granted he he does not have he does not have a great ceiling, but I don't know. Like I'm not playing I'm not playing McLaurin. You know who, you know who's actually probably better is probably Shark. Shark is probably better right there at six k. I think there are probably a, a few people that are better. Kenny Galladay is five point eight k. Tyler Boyd, 5.6K. Like you've yeah, got- Boyd Boyd might be cash game chalk. Just play just play FanDuel if you want to play Fitzgerald this week. Yeah, I guess he's, he is cheaper there. All right. Yeah. Uh, Peter? I mean, do I have to pretend like I play cash games or know who's good at cash games? No, you don't. I mean, Davis <laughs> has stopped doing that while. You can <laughs> pretend that you're going to not cash a single entry tournament again this week if you want. Hey, Tuttle too soon, man. Too soon. <laughs> um, I do like Tyler Boyd. I do like Tyler Boyd a lot. Uh, if we want to go real cheap, probably not for cash, but Mike Williams is a is a good play this week. Kind of similar vein. Oh, big time, DK big Matt time guy. air yards by low model. Hey, Yo, sh- the, the, you know what the air yard by low model doesn't get? That, that Mike Williams he, is garbage. And that he he racked up literally eighty to one hundred yards on the last two plays of the game as Rivers just chucked it up into coverage and wasn't even close to hitting him. And so you that might count, be you might it. be biased because you also think Melvin Gordon's going to get four goal line touchdowns this week too. So. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, the but the crazy Mike Williams thing will on, take it down to the one. The crazy thing on DraftKings is there are like a bunch of good like all the good plays are in between five and and six K. We got Kirk if he plays, MVS if he plays, and Devontae Adams and Geronimo Allison doesn't. Uh Calvin Ridley, Brandon Cooks, and um Robert Woods all in that huge game. Kenny Galladay, um Mar- Marquise Brown. Marquise Brown is gonna be crazy low on that he is like he's one of the air yards per game leaders and Smokey Brown. Really- yeah, yeah, John Tom Brown Bell. is a great play. I don't like that he – because he's like – he's uh, if I recall correctly, he's one of those dudes who has a big 
um, like injury designation split. Although, well, he's we've already watched never, injuries he never, don't matter. He never, he never <laughs> played for Arizona because he was always injured. Yeah. Well, and also he's coming off of a bye week, so hopefully, which means he got hurt in practice, which is not good. <clears throat> I think it's. I think it's. I think he'll be fine against Miami. You just need like a half of a leg against Miami to do anything. Well, that's why I think, I mean, so, okay, here's another, here's another scenario. So let's say that John Brown does not play. Um, do you like the Green Bay secondary guys like Lazard, Kumaro, Shepard, or would you play Robert Foster, Foster. Or, or, or Duke Williams? I was going to say, isn't Duke Williams running ahead of Foster? I mean, well, CFL, CFL legend Duke Williams. I'd rather just naked. Naked, naked Josh. Josh. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. There are no good punts this week. Like, right as of right now, the only playable guy on DraftKings in, like, single-entry three-max cash games is Darren Waller. He's the only guy under 5K who's good. Uh, Dante Pettis. Ah, uh, there you go. Boom. There DK we go. We got to – Boom. Metcalf is cl- yeah. Metcalf Metcalf is close. I, I like I do like him. I know he's on the injury report, but under five thousand, DD Westbrook. He had eight targets last week too, and going against that Bengals secondary, he would be a pretty and, good. And player. they have no tight ends. Just, so Jeff Swaim dead. Josh Oliver's coming back. They had to re-sign Ben Koyak. So uh, uh, I think it, they it, have it, Seth Devalve, my boy. <laughs> Do they? I don't. I know they re-signed Ben Koyak, so I thought that meant Devalve got cut. Yeah, I'm not sure. uh, Alden Tate also under five K, four point five K. If you just want those targets. Speaking of tight ends, how how like big and majestic is he when he runs, Davis? Dude, he is so slow. I, oh. I I might I might take I might take Big T straight up versus Alden Tate in a forty yard dash. I thought Alden Tate actually had a pretty decent forty. You are you are wrong. He's real slow. But the, Davis, let's remember when you said Curtis Samuel wasn't fast. <laughs> well, that was a, yeah, that was just that was a lie. <laughs> All right, playerprofiler.com. Let's see this. Auden Tate, bring it I up. I think he's a four six eight. I yeah, when I looked I him up, um, yeah, he's I four six eight. Speed score was what I what I saw before. Brandon Not Coleman, like a, brutal. R- Rutgers legend Brandon Coleman. New Orleans Saints legend Brandon Coleman. I remember playing Brandon Coleman on a slate. Yeah. yeah I think he was in a Thanksgiving showdown, maybe. <laughs> All right. So, any high price wide receivers this week that you have any interest in, Tuttle? Um, I mean, we can just keep playing DeAndre Hopkins and he can keep being a cuck. We can do that. <laughs> third third um, string tight end, DeAndre Hopkins. Dude, it's bad. It's bad. Um, yeah, D, I mean, I'm, I'm not interested in Michael Thomas. He's going to see the targets, but I don't like the matchup for him. I, I think Chicago just freaking just destroys New Orleans. Uh, you you do? Oh, yeah. Interesting. I do. Really? This I do not think that. that. I also am not thinking Alvin Kamara is going to actually play. So are you I don't, think, I don't think he's going to play either. Yeah. Oh, no. please do not let us tell David Montgomery. Well, I'm just, if, you, if you think the Bears are smashing, you're probably on Montgomery. Bears and Montgomery. I'm not on him. I may have said he makes a fine correlation play with the Bears defense. A logical correlation play. I think um, I'm on the Saints defense. Man, of these, of these high-priced, what, it's probably Cooper Cup? Well, I was waiting for David to, uh, to tell Julio Jones. Oh, I'm, I'll be playing. I'll be playing Julio Jones in Game Six. You can you can bleed at like, min, min three running back. Min yeah, but if I mean, <laughs> so of seven uh, of the receivers above seven K on on DraftKings, who's the best? Cooper Cup. I think it's Cup for me. Yeah, Thielen. I think is interesting too. To me, to me, it's still Julio. We we just we haven't got the Julio explosion game. It, it's coming, and I think this this game has the potential to be one of the most absurd back and forth that like we're gonna see all year. These are the two quarterbacks that lead the NFL in passing attempts. The Rams are the fastest team in situation neutral pace. The Falcons are top five. When you get two fast teams that pass a lot, we're talking about a game that could see 150 plays ran, like just like crazy stuff. So I, I this is. Like Goff, Ryan, and then bring backs with all five of the wide receivers, Hooper and Everett. Um, like th- that's going to be my number one like exposed game a- and like quarterbacks and wide receivers in tournaments. Counterpoint: Can Goff we have sucks. a Juli- 
can we have a Julio explosion game if he just gets out targeted by his tight end? Every if, if can he explode on four targets? <laughs> Probably not. What about a um, squeaky wheel narrative with Keenan Allen? He's is, been. He is, is, is who I squeaky? thought I was, Dave. He uh, he's been on social media. He's uh, visibly frustrated. Yeah, he he quote tweet he quote retweeted Rotopad. Oh yeah, 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 I, yeah, yeah, I think yeah, it was the, I think it was the biggest moment in in NFL Twitter history. He said, <laughs> uh, as Tuttle would say, he said S H I T sad. Shit sad. <laughs> the oh, the hey funniest guys, language. The funniest <laughs> thing was Keenan Allen's follow up tweet, like a few hours later after he got all the responses, and all it said was, "I still like us." <laughs> <laughs> Having to assure the fans that he liked it. Well, if they lose to Tennessee this week, it's 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 all over. All right, um, <clears throat> let's move on. Unless anyone has any hot takes, I mean, we got we 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 have not talked about the Green Bay wide receivers at all because this is like this is the number one thing to figure it's out. Just, this it's week just is. hard. To, I, it's it's a Thursday. It's hard to talk about it when we don't know who's going to play. I mean, people, people tune into the show for very serious Catch tactical analysis of <laughs> of football. They need. Does to know it matter, what Davis? Happens. If if either Geronimo or MVS play, does it matter? Geronimo, Geronimo is not playing. So okay. just that, that dude, yeah, that dude, he, he's not playing. He so it, it 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 comes down to does MVS play and is Devonte Adams more questionable than doubtful? And so. Let's say right now, let's say one of those guys plays. Don't even make the distinction who. Do you think that Lazard or Kumaro are playable? I think yes. Um, I I think it's pretty risky, but I would say yes. And then for sure, if both if all three are out, I think Lazard and Kumaro are both like in the pool of you know thirty five or forty playable wide receivers. Make the case for Kumaro over Lazard based on just the very small sample size that we saw in last week's game. The narrative that well, Kumaro would play Lazard. So Kumaro, I would think, is going to play the slot, and no, those super. are just those are just easier targets, right? Because I think I think what we saw in that game was Darius Shepard. That's a coffin, bro. You're done. You you drop you drop an Aaron Rodgers pass for interception. You're like cut. You're if if they had healthy bodies, Darius Shepard would be cut right now. So I, I don't have any worries about like I, I think Kumaro would get five or six targets and that's probably fine. I don't think he'd score. I think Lazard has like a way better ceiling because as mentioned, Jake Kumaro is basically a plumber, but I, I still think that I still think that he would be like a play, but I would play Lazard over him. Oh my gosh. I just got the, the terrible take. Do you guys want it now or no? Mercedes Lewis. Can no. I take it? Can I take a guess at it? Uh, Adam, it, it's, it's in this game, but it's not anybody you would think. Is it? Yeah. I would say Mercedes Lewis. If it was anybody. No, no, I don't. I didn't. I didn't think it was from this game. I don't got it. It's a revenge. Zay game. Jones revenge game. Trevor Davis. Trevor Davis revenge. Dude, I, li- I can't. Wow. I can't handle it. Trevor Davis revenge game, baby. <laughs> this this show. This show. If took the shark out, out of the Trevor water Davis and is doing revenge. kickflips over the yeah. shark. Yeah, <laughs> revenge is a dish best served cold in this situation. <laughs> I mean, when 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 Trevor drops four for forty two on you, you know, <laughs> with right. uh, with another sixty yard rushing touchdown. <laughs> let's um, let's talk about FanDuel construction, and we'll go to tight end. And wrap this puppy up. Um, FanDuel, Peter, we let you go first. So sweet of you, Dave. Um, Thank you. Let's get a let's get a Josh Allen team going. Seventy seven hundred. Now, what's this website? F A N D U E L period C O M. Can you let me let Tuttle do this spell? Oh my bad, I took his spelling thunder. <laughs> That, that, was bit, a little, that, was a, that was a hard word for me to spell anyways. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we got, do you want to pair him with anybody or you just want him to be naked? No, I don't do that like alpha bullying move where I take two picks. I like to, you know, Kitchen's spread it just going to bring it back with Preston now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think I want to bring it back with anybody from this Miami team. <sighs> wow. You don't want to play anyone from the 11 total? <laughs> Well, Davis. Soccer Dave is always a he's always a proud one to take a stand. A lot well, of courage against. Uh, I said against the Bills. I don't. I don't really want to play you one against the Bills. But you say that defense don't matter, and that you team, have to bring team, it back. Team team totals matter. 
I mean, the data, the data does basically say you just regardless of, of who it is, regardless of matchup, regardless of projection, you, you are just better off to doing a bring back. Okay. So who would you like to bring it back with? I'm not, I mean, I'm not, Josh Allen is probably not going to be in my player pool. Cause I don't like the bring backs. And I think he's going to be, I think he's going to be kind of chalky as a one-off, which just exposes you to a lot of horrible ways to get beat in tournaments. Uh, I mean, Pres- our- Preston is the, the only way you bring it back. I'd say Devonte if you wanted to. How about a terrible take? Uh, Mike Gusecki. Oh, okay. We've mentioned three Dolphins players. <laughs> this is- <laughs> No Davis is mad, but on Sunday morning he'll be asking, "Should he play Mike Gusecki in cash?" It's I mean, mad, I, it's Fitz Magic, baby. He can he can breathe life into an offense. Also, Gusecki. I mean, I had a celebration. I got the streamers career high seven targets last week. My entire family came over. It was super fun. We had the funfetti cake. Yeah. I mean, let's keep the good times rolling. All right. So we got uh, Josh Allen and then uh, Tuttle. Um. I will go ahead. Let's do a Tevin Coleman lineup. Okay. Another week of Tuttle drafting off my takes. <laughs> well, we can go David Montgomery instead. If you're Welcome right. to Silva's world, Peter. This is all Tuttle. Tuttle just tailed yeah. Silva's takes it's every week. Way to do it. All People right, have so been we... calling me our generation Silva. <laughs> I'll release the uh, private DMs that we have uh, on Twitter later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Davis. Um, all right, let's. Uh, so we are now finally in the safe range where Will Fuller is going to be low enough owned that he's allowed to catch touchdowns again. Uh, so we are going to go Will Fuller, sixty three hundred against Indianapolis. I mean, he Wolf, wasn't Wolf, allowing Wolf. himself to catch touchdowns. Those drops. Were I think he brutal. was. A, I think he was a little too owned. I think he was just a little bit too chalky to uh, to to catch those touchdowns. That that was like the picture perfect hot take trail off voice too. It was like <laughs> came in hot with the Will Fuller <laughs> and just let it let it right off. I was trying to remember if they were playing uh, in Houston <laughs> or in Indianapolis because I was getting ready to drop the Will Fuller on it. Will Fuller on turf fast track take and uh I, I got there he is playing in indianapolis so that's that's big time is it isn't both? it turf yeah. Both? Yeah. <laughs> well, i'm pretty sure both, <laughs> both, both are turf. it's a retractable bro. roof but it's still turf right bro but the, but the dome come on the dome we all know the dome makes the difference can someone do a dome retractable uh split <laughs> we, we need to see the new ones on the retractable <laughs> For the, for dude, there. dude, roofs, roofs matter. Roofs matter. <laughs> I would love to see Davis's uh, dome split rules and his GPP builds. <laughs> Men, you need it exposed to at least fifty percent retractable roofs in week seven. This, I'm gonna send. I'm gonna send that uh, request to the Daily Roto developers and see if they can build that into the optimizer for me. All right. Con- con- conditional boost if retractable roof is in play. Oh. All right, I'm a uh, I'm gonna go with the guy that I tried to play last week and did not work out on Fanduel. Uh, Tyler Boyd, bring him back at 5600. Could have played him in cash like Sammy Reed. I played him in cash on Fanduel Gee. last week. All right, uh, over zip. All right, um, let's play. We haven't got this guy in. I don't. I was worried he was going to be mega chalk, but it, there's so many good options at tight end that I don't think he is. So I'll get a uh, Hunter Henry in here. You think that Hunter Henry's not going to be mega chalk? No. Well, he's saying because of Waller Evan and Ingram. Evan Ingram, Ingram Hooper, Hooper, Andrews, they're going to split it. Man, I don't know. People love to tail what just happened, and Hunter Henry's coming off of a very good game. Davis, people, this is the recency bias is here. Flow chart. Flow chart is way up there. Way okay, up you're there. right. You're right. Flow chart is better than recency bias. You're right. People matter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Tuttle? I mean, now that we've left, left ourselves about 9,000 per position, I think we can do <laughs> pretty much we whatever spend, we want here. <laughs> we can spend, we can do the, uh, the naked Josh Allen with Buffalo Bills stack. I'll go, I'll go Dalvin Cook because we didn't do him on the, on the DK lineup. Yeah. All right. Davis, uh, can we just go? Do we have enough money to go to go Saquon? The answer is 
Yes, but we've already done Saquon. All right, let's go with Dalvo then. <laughs> we literally just went Dalvin Cook. Guys, I'm going to be honest with you. This lineup is not filled out on my screen. <laughs> I just went, I went full, I went full Evan Silva on that one. Yeah. Uh, you're sitting out, you're sitting out the, uh, the swole cast. We, we, we can do, we can do, we can do Saquon. We can. On the swole cast. Yeah, I said we could, but we like did him in the other, the other lineup. But if oh, you wanted so you to. just messed me up, dude. No. That's not cool, man. <laughs> Oh my god! You, call, you called me out, bro. Not cool. Darren Waller was downgraded to limited in practice on Thursday. Foster Moreau season. Mm-hmm. Get it. Get it ready. Get it popping. The that his music was slapping too hard. Album slapping too hard. Album narrative over the PA just took a huge hit. Huge. You hate to see it. All right. Uh, well, if you go Packers with that lineup, you're left with sixty nine hundred and. Um, you can either go Steph Diggs, Cooks, or Baby Shark. So why, would you, why would you do Packers defense when the Bears are 200 less? Well, I thought you would want to have 6,900 left, Dan. Okay, fair enough. What a, what a square. All right. What a square, uh, dude. Tight ends. Let's um, talk about DraftKings first. You just mentioned it. Do you think that, that Hunter Henry is going to be Chalk Davis? I mean, I don't. I guess, I guess, uh, you know, Darren Waller is just kind of always a popular play. But coming off of the hundred yard game, two touchdowns, it's very hard for me to imagine that a four thousand dollar Hunter Henry is not one of the three most owned tight ends. Like, I, I do think he ends up more owned than than the flow chart, just because Davis, there's not a ton of obvious value this week. Davis, if you release your Davis Matic ownership projections, I think I would buy them just for the entertainment value alone of what you would have like people at. Mark Andrews will be high as stone. <laughs> yeah. And I think Andrews, Andrews, Hunt, Henry, and Ingram will be the three highest owned with Kittle just being kind of, you know, Kittle just kind of being a value at his ownership. Kit, Kittle, Waller, and then you have Jimmy Graham if they have no wide receivers. He is a, play- he's, a, he's a corpse. Dude, he can't like it's sad. He's literally a dead body on this. I field. needed him to score that touchdown for my flash drafts on Monday night. He really <laughs> screwed me I, over. David, this is the worst story ever told on the history of the show. So you literally I, I actually enjoy it. I'm just because I'm just picturing soccer day in his <laughs> flash drafts. Fourth quarter flash draft. Oh, I needed I, Jimmy Graham there. Jimmy Graham double stack. <laughs> and all I needed is him to catch that touchdown. Davis, you mentioned an eight team an eight team uh season long joke that didn't fly <laughs> earlier this year or this episode. So I mean not not every joke is gonna land. I actually I would say the I mean and I made this comment earlier the best thing about Peter's appearance on the show is it's allowed you to just really be as terrible as possible yeah. because <laughs> the show is still gonna be funny regardless of what you do. So you can just let all of the all, just anything goes really it's true when silva was on the show i felt a lot of pressure to be like the one that had like a sense of humor and funny and now like peter has really made us all like loosen up a little bit we don't have the make silva... us all worse which is also true i think well we don't have the <laughs> silva collar around our necks where we we feel like pressure to always be about football I mean, this show is this show is without a doubt more entertaining than when Evan used to be on. That doesn't necessarily mean it's better, but it's definitely funnier. It's, it's not better. It's, <laughs> it's, it's way better worse, subjective. <laughs> no, it's way it's way worse. We haven't given out one good take all year. I don't think. Other than when other than when Dan was drunk and said to play Vance <laughs> McDonald's, because <laughs> he said because old McDonald had a farm was his reason <laughs> for it. I I propose that Halloween show we all dress up and get truly blitzed for it. You know we've done dress up shows in the past on the Swole Cast. I'm not oh, dressing oh, up. We actually have a show on Halloween, huh? That's yeah, like exactly Halloween. Um. All right. So. Okay. Kittle takes Davis. 
I, I think he is considering the fact that he's probably going to be not owned just because the most extensive tight end really isn't. He's probably the best tournament play of the whole group, which is not, it's not like a mind breaking revelation or anything. And, and it is also hard to get him in because you're never stacking him and there's no like bring back opportunities either, but he's probably a guy that I would try and get like 15 to 20% exposure to, which I think would get you over the field. Tuttle, you have to play one cash game tight end on DraftKings right now. Who is it? Say the right guy. I'll go Mark Andrews. Yeah, it's it's Mark Andrews. Really? Yeah. I thought you would say Hunter Henry. No. I think that game, I mean, dude, just, I mean, Melvin Gordon's going to get all the touchdowns in that game. We've already determined it. So I don't know how you can play Hunter Henry. All right. Um, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask Peter this question too, because he, he needs some help with his, uh, his cash game lineup. So Peter, who would your tight end be? Do not Uh, say Rhett Ellison. Well, this is the thing. I, I hate the flow chart. I get murdered by the flow chart. But can I make, can I get a hall pass for the flow chart if the flow chart isn't the chalk? That's the question I'm wrestling with here because I'm probably going to be playing Kyler in my single entry bankroll challenge. Evan Ingram makes a lot of sense yeah, to bring you back. Definitely, yeah. But I hate the flow chart. Derek Carty killed the flow chart. He put it in a body bag, zipped it up, and threw it into a ditch. The flow yeah. chart's dead. It's not even. It's not even the flow chart though. He's just like straight up a good play. Yeah, but he's so expensive that no one's going to play him this week. So I will say in. There has been a thing this year where guys coming off of injury have been underowned and then just and, smashing. And crushed. Yeah. Hunter Henry, Tyreek Hill, Tevin Coleman, Michael Gallup. Like these guys are all coming back and crushing. So if you can get a little ownership injury discount on Ingram coming back, that that would help. <laughs> a little bit. Did you just do the? You, you just, sounded like David yeah, just I, now. I assumed it was intentional, but I didn't have my video <laughs> up. And I don't think I'm, it was. I've just it was exact, off of it. It was exactly the same. <laughs> I hate Evan Ingram, but maybe I can play him. <laughs> All right. Um, I think I think that will do it for the uh, the core portion of the show. Tuttle, do you have a hot take? Is it is it Dante Pettis or is it Trevor Davis? Um, it was somebody else. Actually. Okay, good. <laughs> Dar- Darius Slayton. Okay. Terrible who, take. Who does who does he play for? <laughs> it, everyone, like this is this is not even a joke. People have been in my mentions for the last twenty four hours saying, "Dude, isn't Darius Slayton going to be shadowed by Patrick Peterson?" <laughs> <laughs> This is this is not a joke. This is, I, I don't and I don't Those know. Those are my if, burner accounts. I was gonna say I don't know if this is soccer Dave or like what it is because I mentioned him on the Mayo show as just like a, a potential low owned guy in that high total game and Mayo was like, oh, Patrick Peterson's gonna be on him. It's like I don't, who cares? And also, why would he be? Yeah, why would he be? <laughs> is that is that terrible take contingent on Shepard not playing or is Shepard playing what makes it terrible? No, I, I assume Shepard's not playing. All right, uh, Davis. Final thoughts, I don't, dude. I just I'm really hoping that Chris Carson doesn't put me in a coffin this mm. week. Please, please, Chris Carson, be fine as chalk. Get at least 16 DraftKings points. No harm, no foul. Hey, this is uh, week seven. Lucky number seven. You, you're due for a bounce back, fella. I can feel it. All right, please. Over that. <laughs> Just best of luck out there, everybody. Also looking to get uh, min caches in your single entry challenge. You know, that's what it's about. Just tipping a chair, just laddering up week after week, smashing in the high chalk plays, making sure you're getting those high equity min caches. Let's do it, fam. You want to plug the Friday show? Oh, yes. Thank you. I'm doing a live build tomorrow. The people love it. No, everyone's phoning it in Friday afternoon. They're just running out the clock until the weekend. Meanwhile, you're tuning in, watching me build a single entry bankroll challenge with my friend Drew Morse, who won the power sweep in week one. So he knows how to take these things down. All right. Also, the uh, the big news from uh, from corporate is that the premium block on Sunday morning, all those premium shows are going to be free this week. Wow. So uh, GPP final takes crunch time are all going to be free in this economy. Ne- every bit helps. And guess what? This is the, uh, 
This is the last show before NBA season is upon us. Oof. Well, no one loses at NBA, so definitely going to be nice to get a little injection yeah. into the bankroll there. I cannot, I cannot wait till a late scratch happens uh, and Davis is just fully engaged with his GPP builds instead of the show, because that will happen. 100% will happen. I mean, I don't even know why we're bringing it up. It's just something that everyone already knew. Okay. All right. I couldn't, well, that I couldn't will pay do attention to the show last week because I was trying to buy Bitcoin, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't pay attention for two seconds when Dalvin Cook was named. I mean, we're screwed. <laughs> Davis, in all seriousness, you are really good uh, on this show, and um, we are lucky to have you. All right. That I remember to get paid for this show this week. <laughs> for week seven. <laughs> Appreciate everybody tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next time. And by next week, I'm pretty sure our fanny packs will be here. So, Swolecast coming for you. Week eight, we'll he- be here on rotogrinders.com. Ooh, ooh, see you later. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I have a, something to put in my fanny pack, actually. Courtesy of the mans. Oh, my very man's nice. Coin. Look yeah. at nice. That. I give him one man's coin for every terrible take that hits. So, <laughs> <laughs> keep it up. So, man. I'll have one this whole season. <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody. We'll see you later. We'll see you next week. Mm-hmm.